Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day of Lent, and a day when many Christian traditions gather for a time of prayer and confession and repentance. And we'll be having one more service of worship this evening in person at 7 p.m. I invite you to join us, or if it so suits you, um, as we are learning to do things a little differently, this evening we're also going to be offering Ashes to Go, where you can simply pass through the back parking lot between 6 and 6.45 p.m., and we'll have the ashes there to give you as well as a handout that you can use in your observance of Ash Wednesday back at your home. So I hope you'll join us. And I thank you for um, sharing in this little video devotional now. So we think about Ash Wednesday. Ashes are often used in the Bible and they mean different things. Sometimes ashes are a sign of sadness. For example, if you've had a death in the family, um, we don't have as many grief rituals in our culture as we used to, it seems like, but grief rituals have always been very important, and that was, that was a way of humbling yourself and realizing your dependence on God. It sort of recalls that scripture that reminds us, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And the Bible says, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In other words, we are mortal. We are mortal. Ashes could also be used as a sign of repentance, that, that I know things are out of sort and I need God's help. And that theme comes through on Ash Wednesday and Lent as well, that, that we're called to, to look at ourselves and our needs and where we have kind of got off track. One of the really amazing things about um, Ash Wednesday and the, the Lenten season was that it was a time when, when people would um, try to get reconnected where folks who had been followers of Jesus, who had kind of gone off in a different direction, could come home, come home. And um, maybe you've had a time in your life, or maybe you're in that time right now where you once were rooted, and now you kind of feel like a plant that's lost its root. Um, the good news is that you can get reconnected. As we observe Lent together, we're going to be using this space by sharing little video devotionals throughout um, the week, as well as music meditation, and I hope those are a way of kind of keeping you grounded there and, and thinking about ways that you can, you can prosper and that you can be strong in Him. I remember Lent from years past and how it kind of went a lot of different directions. In my elementary years, um, Palm Sunday and Easter were really big deals, and and yet, when you came around to like Maundy, Thursday, and Good Friday, they were on the calendar, but they really weren't big observances. And so sometimes the Sundays of Lent, in a way, sort of substituted for Holy Week. So sometimes Lent would be a time of having some special services. I've been in communities where um, they have what they call Lenten luncheons, where, where one weekday every week, um, say at 12 noon, there'll be a simple light luncheon offered and a lot of times different speakers come in. Churches do that together. I've been asked to do the Lenten luncheon talk at a neighbor church and that's always a blessing too. So spiritual content has always been a part of that. Lent has also, as we've talked about before, been a time where people think about personal things like what am I going to give up for Lent or what, what am I going to work on? Last Sunday we talked about the fact that um, sometimes we give up things that we need to give up permanently. For example, somebody might have a, a cigarette habit and they say, well, I'm going to give up smoking for Lent and then we'll see what happens when Easter comes. And so I hope you'll pray for your fellow believers who are really undertaking almost like New Year resolutions. We have Lenten resolutions. Other people give up something that's more of a discipline, like um, someone who, for example, maybe... They're at work and they, they drive and go get lunch um, every day and, and take about, like a, like about a two-minute drive. They might decide, I'm going to give up driving and I'm either going to take lunch in the office or I'm going to walk to get lunch. We've heard of people that give up some sweets that they love and they don't intend to give them up necessarily forever. It's more of a Lenten discipline. So that, that can be a good thing as well. kind of be easier if, if people just told us this is what you have to do and we had no choice in it. But Lent is a lot about choices, a, a way of, of um, working out what you need at this time. And a lot of the scriptures from Lent remind us, do this in your closet, it says. 
This is your personal time. So, so we do this together as the church, but we also do this individually. Jesus said, go pray in your closet. Now, that didn't mean you have to actually climb in your closet, especially if it's tiny, but it did mean we need our alone time. Let me challenge you to do one thing that I learned this week. I went to a three-night prayer school, and my mind is just kind of overwhelmed as I think about beginning some of the disciplines they talked about. But one of the things they talked about was um, most of us, when we think of our personal prayers, we do it silently, and we try to think up things to say. And that's fine. You can do that. But this particular approach to prayer school was to say, think about the prayers of the church, the traditional prayers, the Lord's Prayer, Psalms, Scriptures, other prayers that mean so much. Pray them by yourself out loud. How often do you do that? And the point was made, when you don't know what to pray, you can still say your prayers. That's what we teach our kids, and then when we grow up, we forget it. We need to say our prayers. I began early this morning with my personal Ash Wednesday service that I attended, and then we've had one here in the church and got one more coming in the church, but I haven't yet done my first day of Lent personal prayer time, but I'm going to do that, and I'm going to pray out loud. And it was a reminder that we don't pray, he said this over and over again in the teaching, we don't pray in order to talk God into doing something we pray that we might be formed in the faith. You see the difference? So if I'm trying to talk God into something, I need to think, what am I going to talk God into? How can I say it right? But if I'm praying to form myself and my community in the faith, the historic prayers and scriptures and psalms and hymns can mean so very much. So I invite you during the season of Lent Get in your prayer closet, wherever that is, maybe in a closet, maybe in a certain chair, maybe by a candle, maybe outside on the porch now that the weather is getting greater, and have your little prayer closet, and if you will, even for just a little bit, pray out loud. And think about this poor preacher who's really biting off a big discipline. The way um, Pastor Brian challenged us to do that was he says, do this until Easter before you evaluate it. Isn't that interesting? Don't think anything about it, just do it. It's kind of like a Nike approach to prayer. Just do it. After Easter, then you can evaluate or then you can change it. But just follow the plan. So pray for me as I start this journey. God, on this Ash Wednesday, we turn to you and we repent of our sin and acknowledge our need in you. And I pray for our prayer closets. I pray for our personal disciplines. I pray for our renewal. I pray for all our church families, all the pastors of our community. Pray for our world as we live in such a precarious time and things kind of get scary sometimes. I pray for voices that are already standing strong for peace and justice in a world where there's so much evil. Strengthen your people. Strengthen leaders for good. And Lord, I pray that your kingdom will come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.